I'm lying. I did plant kale here, that's right. Some days, your happy accidents just reaffirm your joy and your resolve for doing what you're doing. Welcome to A Simple Life. We are gonna move our cattle from our main fields or on our home farm to the fields we lease right down the road. So I'm gonna set up the wire right now and get that all set up and then the boys and I are gonna push them down there and do a little bit of a cattle drive. It's a miniature cattle drive. We're gonna do that today and then we're gonna head up to Herman's and get some work done on the cooler because we're still working on that. Uh, it's still hot out, but it's not so bad that um, we're dying in the heat like we were earlier this week. It is, it's much cooler. And actually we're preparing because Christine's going out to the East Coast to visit some family. So we're gonna be without the, the, the one and only mother hen. We're gonna have to make do with Colette. And uh, that's not really a, a down step. Colette's pretty darn good at keeping everything in line around the house. So to be honest, I feel bad for the boys because I think she has less mercy than her mother when it comes to doing chores and keeping everything cleaned up after themselves. All right, well, let's get these posts and everything set up and then we'll move the cows. All right, Clint's finishing up the wire right now. Clay's gonna block it at the other end. I'm gonna go round up the cattle right now. Let's go get it done. Come on, let's go. Oh, hey, Chubby, you looking good, buddy. Let's go. So we're gonna do a nice, slow, leisurely walk across the field, um, just because it is a hot day. Not as hot as it's been, but it's hot enough, and we got some good-sized animals in there, and there's no reason to rush them, and we're not in a rush, so we're gonna do it nice and slow, nice and easy on the animals. All right, let's get going. All right, well, slow move is right. The boys are just finishing up getting the wires and everything hooked up and we'll walk them right down the road like we normally do. Let's go, ah, let's go. Come on. Come on, Chubby, let's go. Ha, let's go. See, Colette's at rodeo. I could use Colette right now. Ha, let's go. Come on, let's go. I could use you, Colette. Where are you, baby? And that old mule of yours. I totally get it now. I understand why cowboys are cowboys and they're not quad boys. Like I did last time, we're gonna take this nice and slow and just keep the animals moving the best we can. Obviously you can see he hates the gravel, he hates the gravel. And I think it's as they get bigger, they that really, it doesn't feel good on their hooves. So the good part is this has been mowed up here. So there's a little bit more area that's grassy for them to walk on than before. They always love this area. Ah. 
They know exactly where they're going. Look at that. Chubby, 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 chubby. Dear God, dude. You're gonna have to back up, man. You're chubby. There you go. That was my fault. Dear Lord, he is chubby. Typically, that gate's open the other way, and I didn't check it before we ran them today. That's my fault. Now, there is something in here, and I believe it's called horsetail, or that's one of the names for it. And let me show you. Here it is right here. There's a bunch of it in here. And it's... It has one of the highest sources of silica in plants. That's what I've been told. It's really interesting, my cows will eat it all. They will gobble it up. So there's three things that I notice my cows will eat as soon as they get into a pasture. It's horsetail, hairy vetch, and canary reed grass. Those three things, they always go and they immediately hit, which is very interesting. I don't understand why, but I see it every single time and I paid attention to it and every single time we get into a pasture, those three things are the first things they hit. All right, wonderful people. I'm up here at Oak Hill and we are gonna work on that cooler some more. But I just wanted to show you my beautiful cover crop. Now, I am watering it and I'm watering it because I planted it in the middle of summer. Very dry portion of summer, so it needed to be watered in or it wasn't gonna take. Normally I wouldn't water my grass, especially not my cover crops. I expect them to be planted at the right time, but I didn't plant these at the right time, but I wanted something on the ground. I didn't want to leave the ground bare because I would end up with a bunch of thistles and a mess. But I want to show you one of the things that came up. I've talked about it in the past. It's this comfrey. This is one of those plants that I consider to be magical. I know, I know, not magical like magic magic, but just an amazing plant. Here's why. It spreads by seed or by the root. So if you go in and you dig it up and you break the root up, you can replant the root and those roots, each piece of that root will end up spreading. And we got a bunch underneath these trees. Now here is some more mature comfrey. I didn't disturb this, okay? Right here, this is comfrey. I didn't disturb this. This is just what it does. It gets nice and tall, and then it falls over and creates more biomass. That's one of the reasons why I love it. I'm gonna be using it as a cover crop in between trees. So I've talked about this, but I just figured I'd show you. It really helps uh, shade out a lot of weeds and grasses and stuff like that. Matter of fact, there's a, I just watched a video the other day. It's on the no-till gardener. And the farmers are using comfrey on the edge of their no-till garden and beds to choke out the grass so the grass doesn't spread into the beds. I thought, wow, that's amazing. I never thought about using it like that. I've used it, or I wanna use it in between my trees and stuff like that because of how it, how and what it does. But I never thought about using it to stop grasses along the edge of beds. I think I'm gonna to have to plant a lot more comfrey. But this has actually turned out really, really nice. I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of an update. Obviously, you know, I've been watering. There's been some watering happening. But I mean, I have to get it established one way or another, but it's doing really, really good. All right, well, we are going to get up and work on the cooler. I just figured I'd show you this. And I show you the comfrey. The comfrey is so cool. I, I, it's one of those things I just love. I love because it's just a natural, good plant. It's good for you. It's good for the soil. Good cover crop in general. So, all right. Yeah, it's looking good. This is looking really good. I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, we lost some tips during that heat wave. That's okay. The plants are still strong. That heat wave was, oh, look at this. I didn't put this here. I did not put this here. Do you know what that is? Do you know what that is? Uh, now, okay, I'm gonna go out on a limb and we're gonna see if I know what this is.
I do. Kale. That is kale. I did not plant kale here. <gasps> I'm lying. I did plant kale here. That's right. Okay. Insane. I totally forgot about this. I had a bunch of um, uh, seeds and like husk from um, harvesting my own uh, kale seeds. And I remember I just took the, the husk. It was mostly husk. It was like 99% husk. And I just threw them out here. And I totally forgot about it. I forgot I planted kale. That's insane. Okay. This is so exciting. I love this. Okay, you're, you're watching me in a moment of absolute uh, bliss and happiness and joy. Okay, so we have kale in here. We have kale right here. And over here and over here. And then we have oats and wheat and rye. And some blackberry bramble. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, when you do your thing and you just keep doing your thing, you forget sometimes what you've done. And when I say you're doing your thing, like you have a plan. And for the folks that have been watching this channel since the beginning, you've seen it's slow progress, but there's been progress. And if you can see what I'm doing right here, okay, you know where I'm going with this. You know exactly where I'm going with this. Yeah, it's gonna be that beautiful. My heart swells with pride. And I didn't even know. I, I totally forgot about the kale. <laughs> Alright, let's go get some work done on that cooler. Some days your happy accidents just reaffirm your joy and your resolve for doing what you're doing. I forgot about that. I love it. All right. So it's been a while since I've done any real remodel slash construction like this. I mean, I think the last time it, I was in my 20s. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to be putting some one by material on the concrete. And the idea is that when I put my insulation on, I'll have something to screw my insulation to because I'm going to have about four and a half inches of insulation that go on top of these one buys. I tried to use some concrete screws and it turns out that the cinder blocks just didn't do very good with them. They just weren't getting enough purchase. So I ended up using nails. Um, and the nails I used were, I don't even know if they were proper concrete nails. All I know is they drove in and they stuck really good. And so I just used them. I went with it. I used that and I used an adhesive specifically for uh, concrete. So it ended up working out really well. As you can see, it's not the most exciting job. And this is something I needed to do. So my insulation wasn't just adhered to the concrete. I don't want to just trust the bond of an adhesive to hold my insulation up. I really don't want to have to come back and redo any portion of this cooler in the future. So I also use some spray chalk to put marks on the floor and on the walls. And that's there so that way when I come back, I'll know where to put my screws for my insulation. And it's just one of those things that you kind of have to communicate with yourself. Once I was done with that, I started working on the door frame because I need to be able to figure out what my door frame opening is, kind of what size it's going to be, how I'm going to frame the door in, all that kind of stuff. So I end up building a header that's going to go above the door. The header wasn't too far above where I'd actually finished the wall. It's about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter. The header is made out of pressure treated two by six. One of my two by sixes that I ripped down as well as another piece of pressure treated two by six. The whole entire roof is going to be sitting on top of this header, and that's the reason why I built it the way I built it. Typically, I would use a couple pieces of plywood on top of whatever else I was going to sandwich in there because plywood on edge has a really, really high strength, but I didn't have any plywood, and for what I'm doing, it'll be perfectly fine. Once I got done figuring out what height I was going to do it, and I got done building it, I was able to kind of get a better idea of where my door was going to sit and find the center line of the building. I got my header on. I want to show you something. I want to show you how out of whack this building in is and why I did so much work. This is how out of whack this is. That board is level and we have an inch and a half down there. And it goes all the way up and tapers to nothing right here. Okay. And over here we have the same thing. Okay. 
that's how out of whack this is. So I now have to make the decision, and I've done this before, do you, do you level everything or do you build with the building? So with a door frame, I'm a little bit more on the side of you just go level because I'll show you the size of the door. The door that I have that I'm gonna be using is not like a regular door. This is a proper cooler door. This is the door, okay? I got it for like 120 bucks off Craigslist. It's super cool. It needs, obviously it needs some work, but it is thick and it is a proper cooler door. It's got old brass hardware, super, um, let's see. Anyways, I know it works because I had it working last year. It probably just needs some oil. Um, so very cool door, but uh, I do need to make sure that it is properly hung. If not, it'll be an absolute bear to open. And every single time I open it, I will have wished I would have done it right the first time. For right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ignore the fact that I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the door because I can get the roof on, we can do all kinds of other stuff and my opening is set. All right, we'll go back to work.